Morning guys, I'm uh, on the banks of the River Thames uh, today and uh, I'm photographing water birds and uh, it's fantastic. I don't know if you can hear in the background but there's absolutely thousands of Brent geese and I've got probably 20 or 30 little egrets in front of me so it's an absolutely great location. Now there might be a little, back, a little bit of background noise because uh, I'm just um, off the, uh, the seafront here actually so there's um, a air conditioning unit going off in the background, there's the odd train coming past but it just goes to show that it doesn't really matter as long as, um, if it's quite busy, as long as there's a food source nature's going to come and out there I've got the Thames Estuary and it's a big muddy estuary and it's like a supermarket for waders and seabirds there's loads of crustaceans, invertebrates, worms and they're all feeding on this really um, nutrient or protein rich mud and um, I've come here on a rising tide, so I'm in position and I've just been waiting for the tide to push the, uh, the waders and the seabirds in. And if the tide comes closer to me, obviously the seabirds and the waders are coming closer. So it's an absolutely fantastic uh, location here. I can't tell you how many seabirds there are, it's just superb. Um, so I've got footage so far of little egrets, I've got footage of Brent geese, I've seen a few other sort of red shanks and stuff like that, so we're just going to keep waiting and uh, see what the tide brings in uh, close to my camera. I've got my 600mm lens on because I want a long reach today, so I'll speak to you soon guys. This is absolutely fantastic. So for the stills photography, I'm taking a really low angle and I'm just using my bag to lean on and that means I'm level with the birds. I'm actually probably a little bit lower uh, in some cases but I want to be at eye level with these animals so I've got a low viewpoint. When I'm doing uh, my filming, I'm using the tripod which is just over here uh, and I'm dropping it down quite low but maybe not quite as low as when I'm on the bag. Um, I'm using, as I say, my 600mm lens. I'm on a thousandth of a second for the shutter speed and because the light is quite low, it's, the sun has been popping in and out, but at the moment it's quite cloudy. Uh, I'm on a uh, f4, so I'm wide open on this lens because I want to get as much light through uh, into the lens as I can. But this is just fantastic. Um, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to stay here because the tide is coming in uh, quite rapidly. But I'm going to hang. I've got um, a little pair, uh, there's a little ladder over there that I can get up. So I've got my escape route for when the tide gets really close. But this is fantastic. Uh, the, the great geese are just starting to get pushed past my position so I've got the little egrets I'm going to start photographing and uh, filming the Brent geese a bit more so yeah, um, what a cracking morning
as I've already mentioned, uh, the Thames Estuary is full of food. Now, when it comes to the waders, such as uh, little egrets and red shanks and curlews, they feed on, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the invertebrates and crustaceans and worms in the mud. But the actual Brent geese, uh, and, the, and you can see the Brent geese in this uh, video clip, they feed on eelgrass, which is a, a vegetation that's really rich in protein. And that's the reason they come to the uh, Thames Estuary. Um, now generally they're feeding at low tide and they can really get to that eel grass quite easily but even at high tide, and that's what we're on now you can see they're still feeding, there's little bits of eel grass floating around in the water so they'll continually feed because they're trying to build up after the long migration that they've just completed I've moved up the coast to a, a close by reserve because the tide's in now. So that means uh, A, I've got nowhere to um, set up my camera. And also what happens is all the waders and uh, the shorebirds, they'll either roost on the water or they just bob around on the water or they come to uh, areas where they can settle down in safety. And um, at this reserve here, we've got just over there, there's um, a lagoon. Now, it's a very uh, shallow lagoon and uh, they'll come and uh, rest up and maybe try and feed a little bit. So I've already seen uh, some little egrets, uh, there's a few lap wings floating around and some av uh, avocets as well. Now there's not huge numbers, but I'm guessing the numbers will uh, probably uh, increase as the um, autumn and winter comes on. So it's early autumn at the moment. So the numbers of these birds normally increase as uh, the season, uh, you know, pushes on uh, towards late autumn and winter but it's still good though because uh, I've got avocets in front of me as I say little egrets and uh, lapwings and um, I'm in a hide here now generally um, I think the best photography and filming will be the stuff that I've done this morning because I was on the beach and I could get uh, eye level with the animals and that's where you want to be really so I don't find um, hides in nature reserve the ideal place for wildlife photography or wildlife video not so bad for video I think uh, because you tend to be a little bit more forgiving with a moving image but when it comes to stills photography you really want to be at eye level with the animal but the fact of the matter is the tide's in now so I've got my photographs already and I might as well spend a couple of hours in this hide and see what pops up and as I say I've got avocets, lapwings so far and uh, little egrets so yeah bye for now guys and uh, I'll speak to you uh, in a while I'm just waiting for a little egret to come round one of the little uh, islands because it'll be a bit closer. But also there's a little red shank that's just popped up. So um, things are beginning to come in. Uh, I think, you know, as I say, the high tide is, is pushing the waders and some of the other shorebirds into this lagoon. And uh, there's a little bit more activity at the moment. So that's all good. There really is a lot going on now. It's it's uh, really starting to get quite interesting. I've got uh, still got the Eversets, uh, the lap wings, uh, red shanks. There's three or four now, but I've also got a curlew just coming and uh, some godwits. So there's an enormous around, amount of wildlife. So it just goes to show, actually, when you first turn up to somewhere, if there's not a lot going on, you've just got to be patient and wait because often, um, you know, these areas do draw in. All enormous amounts of wildlife and you've just got to be patient. I've also uh, put my 1.4 converter on uh, the lens, uh, in between the lens and the camera. So now I've got the equivalent of 840 millimetres because some of this wildlife is still a bit distant. So um, I think that's a good thing. I'm pulling the wildlife a bit closer by increasing my focal length. So yeah, this is absolutely fabulous. I'm having a great time. Um, I'd still like to be at eye level with the animals, but you know, this is where I can be and uh, it's still very good um, photography and certainly good uh, for the filming side of things.
I think that's about it really. Um, I've had a cracking morning uh, both down on the beach and then up in this hide. Um, I think I'm going to head back for lunch and then I'm busy this afternoon. I've got stuff to do. So yeah, I've had um, curlews, uh, lapwings, avocets, uh, little egrets, uh, red shank, uh, I think some pl uh, plovers. It's been, yes, yeah, stunningly good. And as I say, I'd rather be low down um, you know certainly for the stills photography but here you know i have to be in the hide and and that's fine but it's been from in terms of the amount of wildlife it's been really good lots of different species uh and again it's all about getting your timing right and it's always worth when you're doing uh coastal wildlife photography uh to uh, wait for the tide to come in uh get there early you know two or three hours before uh, high tide and wait for that tide to press the animals in a close to you when you're on the beach and then if you can find a reserve that's got lagoons then they'll start to fill up as well obviously if you're doing uh, some um, coastal photography make sure uh, if you've got an incoming tide that you've got uh, an easy uh, route off the beach because you don't want to get trapped uh, at all you know safety comes first but yeah it's been brilliant i've really really enjoyed this morning so i hope you've enjoyed this video as well um yeah, and if you have enjoyed it, if you can give it a like, a thumbs up, that always helps my channel. Uh, and if you haven't already subscribed, if you could consider subscribing, that would be brilliant, more the merrier. And then last but not least, if you've got any comments about wildlife photography or shorebird photography in particular, just drop them in the uh, comments section below. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching guys. Um, I, as I say, hope you've enjoyed this and I'll speak to you on my next video. So bye for now. Mm -hmm.